Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today, I'm going to talk about one of the best budget sneakers money can buy, the Saucony Jazz. This is a classic runner that is super underrated, and in some cases, you could pick this up for as little as $20 to $30. So let's do a quick history about Saucony and talk about the Jazz and why it's one of my all-time favorite sneakers. Let's start with a quick history on the company. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Saucony was founded way back in 1898. Because of the name and its popularity overseas, a lot of people think this is a European brand, but it's actually an American brand that started in Cutstown, Pennsylvania, and the name comes from a Native American word, Sakonk, meaning where two rivers run together. This makes sense because the logo was inspired by a creek in Cutstown called Saucony Creek. They say there's a section of that creek where water flows around three distinct boulders, and you can see that represented here in their logo. And those three boulders represent the guiding order of their brand, good performance, good health, and good community. The waviness of the logo represents the creek's constant flow. In the 1960s, a company named Hyde Athletic Industries purchased Saucony, and by 1979, popularity and demand for their running sneakers was so big that they officially changed the name of the parent company from Hyde to Saucony. Since then, the company has switched hands from StrideRight to Payless and is now owned by Wolverine Worldwide, and their headquarters are located in the suburbs outside of Boston, Massachusetts. A lot of people back in the 1960s had problems pronouncing the name, and most people called it Sakani. So to teach their customers the correct pronunciation, Sakani would have the phrase Sakani printed directly onto their shoeboxes. They were known as some of the best running sneakers of the 1980s, but they had a lot of competition, and soon Nike, Adidas, Reebok, Puma, and Fila would start to dominate the space. Through the 1990s, and even today, people kind of forgot about them and stopped considering them as an option, but they're still making sneakers, and in my opinion, they are extremely underrated. Now that we know a bit about the brand, let's talk about the Jazz in particular. These were originally released in 1981 as a running sneaker. Saucony worked with a podiatrist by the name of Frank Santo Pietro to develop a design that focused on reducing weight and achieving greater balance. Whoever Frank is, he did a great job because 40 years later, these are still super comfortable, well-balanced, and lightweight, even by today's standards. I'm not exactly sure, but I believe the three pairs I own are all from the same pack, and they're called the Jazz Original Premium Fleece or the Jazz Original Fleece. They were $80 at retail when they dropped in 2016, but I picked them up a few months after that for around $60 each. I have the Olive Colorway, the Navy White, and the Tan Magenta. I bought these all around the same time five years ago, and I wear them a lot. I'm a Nike head through and through, but around 2018 and even 2019, I went through a phase where these were the only sneakers I wanted to wear. There's just something I like about them. You have a classic runner silhouette, and on the midfoot, you have that signature Saucony logo with the three boulders. If you look close, you could see an embroidered S weaving through two of those boulders. It's a cool touch that has gone unchanged for decades. Another thing that has gone unchanged since the original pair is the soft yet durable, shock-absorbing, striped EVA midsole. EVA stands for ethylene vinyl acetate. Apparently, when you combine ethylene and vinyl, it creates this rubbery foam material. Whatever the case, I love this EVA material. It's lightweight, comfortable and soft, yet stable and supportive. Even though it appears porous, it's actually extremely durable and surprisingly easy to clean. Just give it a quick scrub and it comes right back to like new condition. It doesn't yellow over time and it's perfect for anyone who's a little obsessive about the cleanliness of their kicks. I've dirtied and scuffed these countless times and they always come back to looking new. I believe these midsoles will outlast every other part of this sneaker. Working your way further down the sneaker, you have the original Maxitrack Triangular Lug Outsoles made of XT600 rubber. That's the name of the carbon rubber outsole material that Saucony claims offers exceptional abrasion and traction properties. Okay. That said, it is grippy and very durable. The pairs I have here have a cream color, so dirt is not as noticeable. This tread is so pronounced and chunky, you would think you would feel it when walking, but you really don't notice it. Another thing I love about this outsole is the way it wraps up the front of the toe for walking comfort and extra protection. They also do something similar in the back where they cut the heel at an angle. This simple touch not only looks good and makes for a comfortable walk, but it's very functional when driving. Your heel rests perfectly on that angled part and keeps the midsole from getting dirty. Uh, another feature I like is the thick cushioned tongue with the Saucony Jazz logo debossed into the suede. It's very comfortable and has a fleece inside liner. The thickness of it reminds me of the tongue on a pair of Nike SB Dunks. The fleece lined ankle collar also has a generous amount of cushioning that adds to the support and makes them feel very cozy on foot. I wear mine loose and usually just slip them on and a lot of the time they feel like a comfortable pair of slippers. 
These fleece pairs all came with lightweight rope laces that match their respective suede materials. Most jazz I believe come with flat laces, but these rope ones are some of my all-time favorite laces. There's something premium yet casual about them and I like them a lot. All three of these pairs also have the Deboss logo on the heel tab and a contrasting heel color. The contrasting heel looks okay, but honestly I could take it or leave it. On the inside you have a removable insole and textile liner. All very lightweight and comfortable. Also, before I forget, I know one of the cardinal rules of owning suede is to never get it wet. But if I'm being honest, I have soaped and scrubbed these suede uppers a number of times over the past five years and they still look great. One of the reasons I really like these sneakers is because sometimes if you want to look good and feel comfortable but without standing out or drawing too much attention to yourself, these are the perfect pair. They're also versatile and work well with jeans, shorts, and even sweatpants. I only wish Saucony would experiment more with synthetic materials. I think it would go a long way with their customer base. So in conclusion, these are a chill, comfortable, and effortless sneaker for a really great price. Despite the fact that there are so many cool, interesting, and hype sneakers being released every year, no matter what I cop, sooner or later, I always come back to these and keep them in my rotation. There's nothing fussy or complicated about them, and they are very unassuming. They're just a simple, clean pair of classic runners with effortless style. Add all of that to the fact that they're super affordable and low maintenance, you just can't go wrong. So that's my video on the Saucony Jazz. I'll show you a few more shots and before I go I ask that you please like, please subscribe and please ring the notification bell. Also feel free to check me out on Instagram at E21Life. I'm always posting random content that you might find interesting. As always, thank you all for watching, I really do appreciate it and I hope to catch you all in the next one. Until then, stay safe everyone. Peace.